Hey guys, we're no dummies. We're trained professionals. Don't try this at home. As a SEAL for 12 years, I learned quick that testing and evaluation are critical. I want to have the zip ties knuckle to knuckle. You have no idea what works and what doesn't until the bullets actually start flying. And now that I'm out, I get tons of people asking me all the time about their favorite TV shows and movies. What's realistic and what isn't? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time to put Hollywood to the test. I'm Dom Rosso, and this is Media Lab. Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of Media Lab. Dylan and I aren't here to rob a bank. Da -da, da -da. <laughs> but we, what we are gonna talk about is the movie Heat. And these guys are robbing the bank in the movie and we wanna break it down right here. Why does your hair stay so nice? I don't know. All right guys, this scene was cut down for the sake of being able to show you exactly the meat of it that we need to focus on. We are gonna have the duffel bags full and the main part of this movie that I wanted to break down was the fact that they're shooting, moving, and communicating. And if we get past the fact that they're robbing a bank, if you're actually in a specific uniform with specific kit, can you shoot, move, communicate with that amount of weight and do down man drills? That's the key thing here. So definitely giving this movie its respect of its time for their ability to do really good weapons manipulation, mag changes, bound through cover and concealment, and be able to communicate effectively. Yeah, Val Kilmer has a pretty quick mag change in this scene. These guys spent a lot of time before this movie even started training. There's no doubles. This is all De Niro, Kilmer, Pacino. All these guys are actually shooting. I just killed the Allstate guy. So the other thing that we're going to cover is they're in full auto. The whole time they've been using full auto to bound and shoot, which isn't bad because we had an episode before where we talked about full auto, and we said, what's it good for? Covering fire. That's exactly what these guys are doing. They're bounding forward, and it's, it's effective here, and they look professional. But here's the thing, with that much weight on your shoulder, are you gonna be able to run like that? We're gonna find out. With that amount of money that they showed before, you'll see when he gets down, De Niro has to drag him. I mean, that'd be an extra, you know, 300 plus pounds that he's moving with. So I don't know if they uh, half filled him or what they did. Bag change comes up, he's got gloves on, bag over his shoulder, changing levels. This is really, really well done. That's why we're excited to take this out of here and actually take it to the range. He's got weight on his shoulder, De Niro's got weight on his shoulder. Now he's gonna go and drag this guy however many yards, I think it ends up being, looks like about 200 yards. Both, neither guys dropped the bags, they're too attached to it. Gotta get that money. Still got the weapon slung, is that gonna work? What does that look like? Finds a random car, and as much as we wanna get into the driving portion of this, I'm sure there's a way better episode to do that in as well. We're out here in Waxahachie, Texas, and we're out here on the range over at Extreme Tactics and Training Solutions. This place rocks. We're stoked to be here, and we're gonna practice a lot of shooting, moving, and communicating. But first, what we're gonna talk about, because we are at a range and have firearms, is safety. So number one is always treat a gun like it's loaded, period, no exceptions. Number two, always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. Number three, always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And number four, always know your target and what's behind it. There is no exception to these rules. We're out here, we're gonna have a lot of fun, but safety is our primary concern. But right now, we're gonna break this down and have a lot of fun doing it. So literally, these guys are running around the streets with bags that weigh probably about 100 pounds. So we've got paper, and it's all cut down to the size of money. And these guys in the scene, they were bounding forward. So they were trying to get through where the cops were laying down some fire, and that could be bad guys, it could be whatever. Again, the point is not that they were cops or robbers, it was the point of shooting and moving in a situation where you have another threat. So these guys bounded forward, and the way we're gonna do that is with covering fire. We have Colt M4s, these are fully autos. We've got our vests that are made by Dynamis Alliance. They've got eight mags stuck in them, they're really low profile. So what's gonna happen is we have to manipulate cover, right? We're gonna use our cars, we're gonna stay behind the wheel wells, behind the engine block, we're gonna make sure we're utilizing that, we're gonna communicate. If I start saying bound forward, bound forward, bound forward, well then he knows he's got to set a base of fire for me, and once I hear him start picking that up, I'm rolling around him, I'm making sure I'm doing it properly, my gun's at high port so I'm not sweeping anybody, which they didn't do in the movie, but that's okay. They probably haven't had as many runs at this as we have, but no big deal. So using our flanks, we're gonna check our flanks, keep our gun at high port, make sure we're on safe finger out of the trigger. I'm moving, 
I'm checking and I'm scanning, and I want to walk up to my next available cover, which is the next vehicle. You know, you want to get as much vehicle as you can in between you and the threat. So whether that's behind it, find the wheel well, find the engine block. I mean, I could do something like this where I'm opening the car door. I could deflect bullets coming at me. I'm getting right here behind the engine block. I can shoot through the window. I can shoot out here. I want to get good angles on that. So once I get to this spot, he's going to hear me pick up that volley of fire. And once he does, he can start bounding forward. They yelled at each other in the movie, which is fine. And communication is key, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what we're going to do. If you're trained and you do it enough, you know that if I hear him pick up the volley of fire, that's my key to move. So as I move up, I'm going to my next available cover. Something may happen in here where I'm not comfortable going to what I identified already. I may cut off and go right here with him and pick the same car and be like, it's just way too heavy. Maybe I ran out of rounds. So now, boom, I'm changing. And these guys did awesome mag manipulation. I mean, you know, it's Hollywood. Who knows how many runs they had to do? But either way, it was clean. Dylan and I both have not ran these mags before. I've got the bag slung over our chest, which is the main thing. That's going to put us in an unstable shooting platform. We're going to have to shoot and move with them. And that's really what we're interested to see and give that to you guys and give you some good feedback. So beyond that, Dylan, you ready to roll? Let's do it. All right, now we're going to go hot. Contact right. Three targets, three guys, white jackets, go. Good shit. Nice job, brother. That's a that's a cardio workout. <laughs> <laughs> they make it look easy the way they're moving. Yeah, this bag, as I was running, was just hitting at the back of my knees. Kept taking my legs out from underneath me. Yep. Definitely fatigued me. My strap broke, so I was holding it like this the entire time, wobbling back and forth. Even in the beginning, I couldn't get a stable shooting platform. I mean, we worked it out. I had to lower my center of gravity more so the bag couldn't control me. We definitely proved that they didn't have any weight in there while they were shooting and moving. All right, guys, that's exactly why Media Lab exists, to do exactly what we just did. I'm pretty sure we just had uh, pretty high levels of adrenaline going yeah. through that entire course. Yep. So awesome training while we did it, too. And again, you can't say enough, you know, train like you fight. That's why we took this gear out here. That's why we're doing what we're doing to say, is that realistic in a movie? You know, this was a great special edition for Media Lab. We stayed safe the entire time. Uh, awesome episode. And let's take it to the questions now. What is your greatest achievement? So hands down, serving as a SEAL, going overseas, and nothing will replace that. Nothing will replace the type of brotherhood and, that we had and the type of things that we did and the difference we made. So by far, like hands down, don't even, not even a question. What is your most treasured possession? Besides our friendship, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Well, do we even need to answer that then? <laughs> I would say um, my aunt gave me a cross that was made out of bone. She's like, your great-great-grandfather gave that to me to pass down to somebody special in the family, but it was actually made out of human bone, and he carved it when he was a prisoner of war. And that has been passed down in the family now. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, that just doesn't exist. So that's probably by far the coolest thing that I have. Thanks for the questions, guys. You guys are asking some really good ones. It's actually getting really hard to pick through them, but uh, keep sending them in. Awesome friggin' episode. Without a doubt. Yeah. My boy time. Dylan, we crushed it. Adrenaline dumps, dynamic. We'll see you guys next time on Media Lab.